Hello, everyone. I'm Diana Gray, President and CEO of the Hydrocephalus Association, and September is Hydrocephalus Awareness Month, a time to create broad awareness about the more than 1 million Americans who live with hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus is a chronic neurological condition caused by an abnormal accumulation of cerebral spinal fluid within the ventricles of the brain. As this CSF builds up, the ventricles enlarge and the pressure inside the head increases. The only treatment is brain surgery and for many, multiple brain surgeries. Anyone at any time can develop hydrocephalus from birth to seniors. In the US, one in 770 babies develop hydrocephalus each year and it's estimated that 800,000 seniors in the US have normal pressure hydrocephalus. And sadly, we believe as many as 80% are undiagnosed. Well, we are so fortunate today to be joined by actor, radio and television personality, and professional wrestler, Danny Bonatucci. <laughs> Danny has uh, agreed to share his health journey that led to his diagnosis of NPH. So Danny, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. It's an important thing to get this out there. Absolutely. So you have once said, and you've said before we got on this interview, that you saw every specialist you could imagine to try to get to the right diagnosis. Tell us what kinds of things happen when you would share your symptoms with doctors. What would they tell you? Well, they'd tell me all sorts of stuff. Just unfortunately, most of it was incorrect. And I was incorrect when I got to finally get some uh, doctors to be, to, just to diagnose me either way, I thought most of them were wrong. My father had a debilitating stroke and it, I would have sworn up and down, that's what happened. My hand went numb, I started to limp on my right side and slur my words. Um, and I, I would tell professionals, doctors, MDs, that their diagnosis is mistaken. I have had a stroke. And they would say no, unfortunately, because that would be the good news. But the doctors didn't get it necessarily right. They they said they sent me to dementia uh, to be a specialist on dementia. They were sure I had Alzheimer's or some sort of dementia. And here's the tricky part, at least for me, is it does mimic several other things. It mimicked close enough for me for stroke. It uh, mimicked close enough for professional doctors to say, no, 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 you have dementia. This is early onset dementia. Uh, and it was just hard not only find a doctor because doctors have become increasingly difficult to get an appointment with. Sometimes it can be months. Um, so not only was I positive or some doctors were positive and they were wrong, it took the good part of a year of specialists to get a diagnosis I believed. I had to get into uh, Dr. Williams. I believe it's uh, Dr. Michael Williams. Uh, maybe you know him because he seems to be the top guy. And uh, finally, I got to see him. And uh, he diagnosed me correctly for the first time and has in a way become kind of my hero because this was getting crazy that I couldn't find out what's wrong with me. Uh, if we, I can show you this, I don't know if you can see something this small, but I told my wife once I got sick, actually that's incorrect. Once I got better, we thought it's time to retire. Let's go down to Palm Springs where my wife has always wanted to retire and get a beautiful house with a pool and all that stuff. It'll be great. So she picked this one. And I said to her, I said, you know, even if I was well, I would have probably picked this house. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see it. And that's when she produced, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Can you see this picture? I me? can, yes. Well, I'm here at this house and have no recollection at all of taking that picture. My wife didn't pick on her own. I have been here more than once, all rumored to me. I have no recollection of being in this house until uh, until we had the surgery and the surgery. Let me get this out there right away. And I don't want to fool anybody or make anything It's this easy, but I could no longer walk. I couldn't, everything was wheelchairs, including that picture, obviously, that I don't remember at all. And it would get more difficult as... Uh, we were trying to get a diagnosis, we'd go to the hospital where we'd park several stories down because it was a busy hospital. And then I would have to walk more likely and appropriately dragged by my wife. Uh, and finally, one day I just couldn't do it at all. And so we'd park upstairs where my wife would then go in and try and find a wheelchair for me. And uh, there were very few available. She would go and 
have to hijack a, hydra, a, a, a wheelchair from somewhere else. It was astounding. I mean, the, the best thing that happened is I had brain surgery. Do you think that's not that great of a thing? No, it's not that great of a thing to need brain surgery. It's the best thing you can do if you need it to get it. And uh, and again, this is why I want to, don't want to send anybody with too much optimism, but um, I have pictures of me in a wheelchair that I can't get out of. And the next day, the next day after the brain surgery, I walked the, uh, the gauntlet, if you will, of the hospital. Literally the next day, they put in this shunt which my brother being cruel said, hey, it looks like you have a PB, PBC pump in your head, but this is it. I don't know if you can see it yeah, or not. It's it. big, it's big and you can follow it around. I can feel it behind my ear. Uh -huh. Sometimes, I don't know what times are different. It goes here, then it's tacked about, oh, can show, yeah, down lower. And then of course goes across my stomach. Sure. I couldn't believe it that the next day I walked. I thought, I said to my wife, and I do remember this, I said, if this is the best it gets, I can live with it. I said that from an electric wheelchair, thinking, okay, this is as good as it gets. Then a Dr. Williams, and I can't remember, <laughs> that might come up with the other Dr. Dash, was it? Dasher, Dr. Dasher, I think, did the road work on this. And uh, like I said, and I don't want to presume that they're magicians. I just want to say they're great doctors, but I had not walked in a fair amount of time unassisted, certainly, and I, talk, I took a nice long walk after the surgery the next day. That's so amazing. You Thank know, you. that will inspire a lot of people because this happens to, uh, to many people where they're put in the Alzheimer's bucket or the Parkinson's bucket because there are cognitive aspects of this condition. Sure. And there are um, problems with gait. But someone who knows the condition well, like a Michael Williams out of Seattle University. Yeah, he's, he's the man. Someone like him, he would recognize that and say, this doesn't quite seem like a Parkinson's gait. Let's do some tests and let's, let's look at an MRI and see if the ventricles in his brain are enlarged. And let's look at the whole picture. And it's just so inspiring to hear your story and others who get the right diagnosis and they start feeling better. Now, it's not everyone, but a lot of people say they feel so much better after they get the right diagnosis and they can think and walk again. But again, the right diagnosis, unless they were opening me up, I kept saying they were wrong. I was my own worst enemy on this. First of all, doctors misdiagnosed, not Dr. Williams, he's the guy. But doctors would say all sorts of things that turned out to be incorrect. But I insisted a stroke for the longest. I said, no, I don't have whatever weird thing it is that you're trying to know. It's a, well, it's not a simple stroke, but it's the stroke that killed my dad and it looks just like it. So I was not that helpful because I was insistent. Sure. And, you know, at a certain point, um, you got to get over to, to uh, expertise. I'm standing in a room with doctors and I'm insisting they're wrong, which was just, uh, it didn't slow anything down. The day I met Dr. Williams, I went, oh, I have this. I have a hydrocephalus. That's what I've got. Let's let's follow directions here. And, uh, you know, I don't know when it started. This is kind of a weird thing to talk about. Dr. Williams makes fun of me all the time. But I am a really good rider of unicycles all, since I was 10 years old. And I used to ride a great deal. So now I'm thinking back years. All of a sudden, I couldn't ride a unicycle anymore. No other symptoms except balance. But um, who rides unicycles besides me? And uh, I rode well enough. So I actually did a thing with Barnum's Bailey Circus and from Clowns, we played basketball on unicycles. That's not kidding around the level of expertise. Wow. And then one day, I don't know, 10 years ago, maybe, I went to get up for, uh, I think it was Oprah Winfrey was doing a Where Are They Now show. And I thought, you know what I'll do? I'll ride a unicycle. It'll make great TV and I'll be great. And I got on and I rode maybe 10 feet and I got out of frame, thank goodness gracious. I couldn't ride it. And that was not the first time. Just I thought I'm getting older. Nope, I'm getting a uh, hydrocephalus. That's what I was getting. And so I don't know when this actually started because that was 10, 12 years ago that I also I had a skill that I no longer had. By the way, I can totally ride unicycles now. You Dr. Williams says, Yeah, totally can. Yeah. Impressive. Dr. Williams says, with a helmet? Ah, oh, come on, Doc. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. I love that story about the unicycle, especially. Well, it's and, literally and the how... thing is, I didn't see a doctor till last year or the year before. I couldn't ride my unicycle 
10 years ago or more. So I don't actually know when this really started. Yeah. It may, it, it often wouldn't start overnight, right? You, you, right. you look back in retrospect, you think, oh, that could have been that. You know, that could have been that. A couple times, and then it just gets worse and worse and worse. And the thing is, uh, now I thought a lot of things were aging. I just turned 65. And uh, some things I just thought, well, this is just normal aging. And that it's not normal aging when at normal aging when at 63 or four, you can't really walk anymore. And now, and I'm very happy to say this, I do three miles every day, eight o'clock in the morning, no waiter, and I do them right away. I do two, two miles right away. And I do the other mile just living a life. But, you know, that's, I couldn't do anything like that before. Yeah, yeah, three miles a day is impressive for anyone. So that's- Yeah, my, you're my wife has come at six. Yes, <laughs> I agree. So, Danny, what what did you think when the diagnosis was hydrocephalus? Had you heard of hydrocephalus before? I, did you know anything I, about it? I had uh, because I, you know, a lot of people, it turns out, have this. I was hiring a, a producer and uh, he made a reference to it. And I, I couldn't understand what he said. I said, that, that translates to water on the brain, I think. And he's, yeah, that's what it is. And then he let me feel the shunt, which was in the back of his head. And there was a girl I knew that also had it. So I'm. I'm not alone here in the sense that I've run into, just in living a life, two other people with hydrocephalus. So there must be thousands and thousands more. Well, I, uh, I understand over a, a million Americans have this. Now, yes. help me out here. Do you, would I reference it as a disease? How would I be the best way? A million people have? We call it a condition, but there okay. are many doctors that would call it a disease as well. But our community typically likes to think of it as a condition that they have because they right. don't feel like they have some disease. Um, so it's semantics, but if it feels more positive and you know, a lot of, a lot of the folks in our community have had this since birth and they got one of those shunts at birth and it saved the producer them. producer I was referencing, a man named Gibbons, he had his at birth and he's had, uh, uh, he's had it done twice because he's a grind, he's 40 years old now, if you know what he's had about every decade or so they go back in and clean things out because, you know, it's like anything else in the world. It can get murky. It can get dirty. Yeah, for sure. And and there are some that have to go in and get those shunts replaced um, more often. Um, it's not a perfect device, but it certainly is saving lives until we find something else through research. We do a lot of research at our organization, funding scientists to find other solutions, maybe drug therapy that could control that CSF and make someone better. But for now, we're very, very grateful that we have shunts that can help people get back to their, their old selves, like you feel. Well, I will, I will tell you this, that if I didn't have this big piece of hardware sitting right here, I could convince myself that none of this actually happened. I feel, because I started to make up for lost ground, I, I feel in better shape than I've been in the last 10 years or more. And like I said, I could be convinced none of this happened because I feel like my old self or a little bit better than my old self. Yeah, well, that's tremendous. What would you say to an audience that might be listening and their parent or their spouse is experiencing some of the symptoms that you're experiencing? What would you, what advice would you give them in terms of getting help? Uh, the first thing I do is find a, find a doctor who will listen to you. And that's, that's what I was doing with Dr. Williams. And Dr. Dasher, well, Dr. Dasher knew all the way along, because Dr. Williams, I just want to say this name so much, he just means so much to me now and to my family. Um, I will say that find an expert on what you believe is happening to you. And if you have to, go by process of elimination. Well, that wasn't it. Let's see what else it can be. Because, you know, once we all know what it is, you know, your doctor knows and you know, you believe your doctor, it's, you know, it is brain surgery. You can't take it lightly. But the cure, or at least the, the fixation that I'm aware of, happens so quickly. Don't waste any more time. Find a doctor that will diagnose you correctly and then follow his orders. Yeah. No, that's by nice. the way, I was I was asleep for the actual brain surgery. <laughs> but aside from that, like I said, well, you convinced me that none of this happened. It's like a bad, dark story somebody told me because you know, like I, I am back. My memory is is seems to be back, although I did have to retire. And uh, I can't, you know, I don't memorize as much as I did when I was doing a morning radio show, but everything seems back to normal and fast. That's the other thing. You know, you're wasting a lot of time, but the fact of the matter is it's so fast. The doctor does the operation and the next day I was walking. Now I didn't do any marathons. I don't want to tell anybody it's magic, 
You have to do some certain efforts to be into it. But the doctors do the brain surgery and you I I walk the next day. Yeah, that's how they know it worked for you, for sure. Right. If you're walking the next day after being in a wheelchair and riding a unicycle. <laughs> I don't hear that story very often. So No, you don't. It's pretty exciting. <laughs> We don't recommend that for amateurs. <laughs> <laughs> no, we certainly don't. <laughs> the ride unicycles, but that's amazing. So when you think about Hydrocephalus Awareness Month and an opportunity to tell the world, uh, we also have World Hydrocephalus Day coming up on September 20th, but September 20th, tell the yeah. world how important awareness is. What what would you say in terms of, of the impact of awareness? If you had heard a large uh, message um, about your exact symptoms on television and they were saying those symptoms, would it have helped you to have heard that that could be me? Uh, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because once you weed it out, because the problem with it, as I see it, is that could be me about a bunch of things until you find a doctor who knows what he's doing. Um, that that can mean like I insisted to doctors face highly educated MDs that you're wrong. I've had a stroke. Listen, I'm slurring. Look at my hand. I can't walk. My wife, I, I'm, I'm insisting. And my wife would say, no, it's the other thing a doctor said it was. And then we finally got the right doctor. And he said, you know, it's uh, hydrocephalus. And there's not a cure for it, but there is something that's going to make worlds better. So find the right doctor. And then more importantly, or just as importantly, listen to it or her. Yeah. Well, and, and you had seen what a stroke looks like. Yes, I have. Lived in the house. Sort of the, I mean, you're what you're helping this audience to see is that this can mimic other conditions. It can absolutely it can sometimes look like a stroke. It also looks like Parkinson's Parkinson's disease, particularly with that gait challenge, the walking. Right. And and there is some some cognitive involvement, and sometimes we call it the treatable dementia because it right. is treatable dementia with that amazing brain surgery you had, and you're like, I'm I feel like my old self again, which is pretty incredible and exciting. It is exciting. And I, you know, I couldn't believe because a stroke ruined my father's life until his last day. Um, just taking him out to lunch was a big ordeal. Uh, he didn't want him to be in a wheelchair. So we had a cane that, you know, to go from here to the door of a restaurant took 15 minutes when it should have taken under 30 seconds, but that's what made him okay. And I thought I'm going to fight for the stroke, uh, record, or, or, uh, you know, the stroke uh, diagnosis, thank you. Um, until we get, until I get a doctor to believe me. And thankfully, I guess no doctors would believe me. They would say, well, in no uncertain terms, this isn't a stroke, it's dementia. No. Well, and finally, I found the right doctor who said, in no uncertain terms, no, it's a hydrocephalus and we can take care of it. Right. And one component right can be right like a dementia and also, yeah. yes. Exactly. If I had a t-shirt here, so I wouldn't have to say much. They just said, I love Dr. Williams. <laughs> you know, we cut down on our conversation time because once, you know, you just assume your life is ruined. As I said in the beginning, I told my wife when I was in an automatic wheelchair, I said, if this is as good as it gets, I can live with this. And thankfully, I did not have to. Yeah, well, that Dr. Mike Williams that you love, we love too. He's the chair of our medical advisory board. Um, and he's a he's a pretty amazing um, physician, and he's part of a research network. And he's uh, a, called the he's Adult Hydrocephalus Clinical Research Network, where they're trying to to discover um, new new aspects of this condition as well. Well, I will tell you this: that when I when I meet with Dr. Williams, uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's test or what is he doing, but he starts off with the same two things. One, he says, "Did you ride your unicycle to get here?" We all have a wonderful app. But the other one, he says, and I'll explain this to you in a minute. He says, well, it's all love. I was doing my morning radio show as my memory was failing. And I, instead of quitting or at least resigning, which I ended up doing later, I would get a little bit lost in the conversation. And I would say, well, you know, it's all love. Who's going to argue with that? I didn't know what I was saying. I didn't know what I was what I was about. The conversation that like we are having, and you asked me a question. And I said, well, that's the, mm, you know, really, it's all love. And I would go, okay, and we down to the next thing. But faking your way through this is not a good idea. When again, you find the right diagnosis, you put your hands in the right doctor and the professionalism, and they're they're just one of the, you know, the stay in the hospital was actually rougher than the condition. I stayed a whole month. I had developed other things. Yeah, I had developed, and we don't sure where this came, I had developed meningitis. 
Oh no. And that did not, yeah, that did not clear up quickly. So I was in the hospital for a full, full month, which is a long time. I left a lot, lots of, you know, when I, when I went into the hospital, I could do a hundred pushups, not any real problem. And now I'm still getting back to trying to do four because I was laying in a bed for a month. It was very rough. So again, it, you know, I could just say it's all in love at this point, but I know exactly what I'm talking about. And that is the good news. Have you had any other complications um, since the surgery? Aside from this huge bump in the front of my head? Exactly. Um, your shot bump. <laughs> uh, I can't really think of not any since the surgery because I didn't give up. I didn't say, well, this, you know, this is good. I'm going to relax here that I did the work. And this is what I'm recommending to, to anybody listening to this. You got to do the work. You got to, you know, if you can't do brain surgery yourself, I have a lot of skills, but brain surgery is not one of them. And so after you get the surgery, people will tell you, hey, do this. Hey, walk here, walk around with me. And you've got to do that because you can get, you know, laying in a hospital bed for a while, you can get a little bit testy and you don't want to do that. You want to really you know, these people all have your your best benefit in life. That's all they do is care for you. That's their job. That's what they signed up for. So listen, that's the other thing. Listen to what you're told. When you're told the correct thing, and that's hard to tell sometimes, uh, dementia was a big one. That's the one that scared my wife. I, stroke was the thing I was insisted on. And again, when finally somebody said, uh, no, no, do you have uh, hydrocephalus? Uh, that kind of makes sense. And they'd show me what it is and what can happen to other people. And I realized, oh, that's what's happening to me. Sign on for this and do what you're told. That's like I said, the other thing, once you find out what you've got and how to get it better, then continue to do what you're told by medical professionals. Exactly. They not, it may not be gods, but they're close. Yeah, it is amazing what, what can happen when you get the right diagnosis and the right treatment. Would it surprise you to know that, you know, as much as we love Dr. Mike Williams, that there are others in his profession who don't believe that the condition you have is real, that what? we haven't proved it medically well enough that a shunt will treat hydrocephalus and for normal pressure hydrocephalus. It's true. Well, tell me who those people are and well, I will convince them. Well, see, one of the challenges is, and one of the one of the things Dr. Williams is doing with, with many other neurologists and neurosurgeons, adult neurosurgeons who do the surgery, is a clinical trial. Because we know in medicine that if you're going to prove something, you have to have a randomized controlled trial. One group that is, is not going to get the shunt turned on right away, and one group that's going to get it turned on right away. And then you demonstrate over time that these people who received the treatment, um, it actually helped them feel better. There are people, there are physicians that feel like this is not that common, uh, it's not a big deal. And we believe the data supports, there's 8 million people in the world with yeah. low pressure hydrocephalus. Some of the countries that do a good job of tracking like Japan and Sweden, they help us understand when you apply it to United States, that's about, that's about, uh, uh, about 800,000. Um, seniors in the United States who have normal pressure hydrocephalus. So we're working hard for the audience who's listening. We're working hard to make sure that no more people like Danny Bonaducci get a bad diagnosis because many doctors and general practitioners will know what normal pressure hydrocephalus is. They'll know the symptoms and they'll refer them to someone that can help them get better. Because we, we, the worst thing is to find out that someone didn't make it that they got so bad, they never got the treatment that they needed. They never got the right diagnosis. And that's that's not okay. Well, I'll tell you this, um, that I am a person afflicted with this, and but I'm not a that big of an expert. I had no idea that there were me medical prof professionals that said, you know, I'm not really sure that exists. I got a big piece of hardware in my head that disagrees with you. Yeah, agree, agree. So we have to prove it. So we can prove it one person at a time. Uh, we can also prove it through medical research. And so that's one of the things we're working really hard to do. So if you're listening, we need funds for more research because we need to do these trials um, to find better treatments for hydrocephalus. And we need to make sure that people don't go on undiagnosed and, and feel like giving up because they're not, you know, not getting a provider who understands the condition well enough to treat them. Well You've actually, you know, I get people who uh, ask me questions, not about the hydrocephalus, but about how to make it as an actor, how to make it as, and I, I say the same thing every time, keep going, 
keep showing up. You know, that's what you have to do. You just have to keep going. I mean, seeing doctors is a bit of a hassle. You try and find parking at a good hospital, you know, and then stairs are a new thing that never mattered to me before. So the answer would be the same thing. Never, ever, ever give up, and especially you give up on yourself. Don't do it. You know, you deserve better than what's coming if you don't do this, because what's coming if you don't do this is really bad. When you find a doctor, it's such a good news not finding the doctor or giving up because it's just too much of a hassle to get the wrong diagnosis after the wrong diagnosis. And by the way, if you're like me at all, you kind of believe any words that come out of your doctor's mouth. This was very odd for me to disagree vehemently and vocally with their, so I'm my own, like I said, I'm my own worst enemy. You know, I was positive stroke. One pop doctor was positive, it was dementia. It mimics so many things. And I would think that's the proof is I could do anything. And then I got a shunt in my head and could do almost everything and starting almost to meet like the next day, there were improvements. And I would say I was walking at least a mile Well, somebody holding my arm, but within, within 10 days or so, you know, there's, there's an answer to this. And all you really have to do is go get it, you know, and you have to listen to your doctors and not be a jerk. And I'll explain that the actual <laughs> surgeon that did mine, is Dr. Dasher. And Dr. Williams introduced him to me. And uh, he said, this is Dr. Dasher, to which I said, oh, will all the other reindeers be assisting? And luckily, he he took pity on me and did a great job anyway. You know, they just, you got to keep going till you find Dr. Williams, you find Dr. Dashel. They won't find you. You got to go find them. They don't know what you're struggling with at home. And they don't know that I it kind of had devoted your life. Well, my wife and my life now consists of sitting and TV, which can be better than you think. But that's not a life. And if you don't do the work, that's not a life will hit you in the all of a sudden, you know, you could, and I don't want to scare anybody, but not the next day, but you could die from this. And that doesn't seem like a good idea for anyone. You know, you got to know just your fight for your for the right diagnosis, but fight because you deserve it. You deserve to know what's going on. Absolutely, a hundred percent. What um, what haven't I asked you that you you would like for folks to know about hydrocephalus or or any of your experiences that you think would be useful for them to understand? Well, and this goes for wives and husbands together, I'm sure. But I'm very lucky. I have a young, healthy wife um, in her 40s. Very, yeah, my, my, I'm a senior citizen now. I can't do everything I used to. But my my wife was more, you'd think it was happening to her. And the way she said, oh, I'm going to cry. <laughs> I don't want that. But it was happening to her. And she wouldn't stand for it. Whatever it was difficult to do, add on that I can no longer drive, which I can now, um, that I'm unemployed, essentially, and so your husband and or your wife has got to be in this as much as you are because you'll deteriorate without this. They, it will, once you've been told the wrong thing so many times, you just go, well, this is as good it's going to get. That's not true. You get better and you get better fast. So I guess that's the thing. Find the right doctor and don't find the right doctor that agrees with you or, you know, you'll be getting diagnosed with dementia that you don't have or stroke that you didn't have you got that's you know your your spouse or your partner really has to be behind you and there's got to be you got to find the right doctor and that can be you know a, a bit of a, an effort because this mimics so many things so my my answer to you is never give up it's the same answer i give to other people asking other questions the answer is never ever ever give up fantastic and have an advocate in your life right to, to have a spouse or uh, a loved one who advocates along with you when my, my wife not, deep, dark moments you need someone saying don't give up not not only did uh my wife really participate in all of this but at some point i was starting to get ready to just give up and my wonderful wife was not and that's that's how we found dr williams you know she just i guess we just heard through the grapevine who this great doctor is um but, you know, it's hard to believe people. It's hard to believe anybody, no, no matter what an expert you are. If a doctor said to me, you have the flu, I'd pretty much agree. But if I weren't coughing and or sneezing, I would disagree with said doctor. And I disagreed with a bunch of doctors until I found the one who not 
<laughs> I didn't walk into, first of all, I don't think I walked into his office at all, but I didn't walk into Dr. Michael's, uh, I, I'm sorry, yeah, Dr. Williams uh, office on my own. You know, uh, my wife drove and parked, I, I, as I told you, but Dr. Williams, he, he decided early on, but not with a fair amount of effort, this is what's happened to me. I took, I took tests that were so in a way remedial to any healthy person. It was the thing where he said, can you identify this animal? Well, it's a rhinoceros. What kind of test is this? And there were all these things. And then he would say, oh, I hated this part. I want you to subtract from 100 by sets of seven. So you get 93, no problem after that. I know, that's <laughs> tough, yeah. <laughs> he took a lot of this walk around his office and stuff. And finally he said, this is what's happening to you. And I don't know if he said it this way, you know, but he's a very competent guy. He could have said whatever. But he said, you know, oh, you're, uh, you have hydrocephalus. And he didn't say this, I'm just going to say it for him. And I can fix it. And I went, you know, I, it's just amazing that somebody could do all of that. And, and the, I don't want to skip Dasher, who actually did the hands-on uh, uh, diagnosis. But Dr. Williams, I became pretty good friends. I said, so you didn't do my surgery? Because I don't remember much. He said, no, no, no. And I said, just out of curiosity, could you, if you had to? And he didn't say anything, but his nerve went, yeah, of course he could. <laughs> he definitely knows how it works even if he's not a neurosurgeon he definitely understands all the pieces for sure yeah for sure well, it's so lovely to talk with you and i cannot thank you enough for being willing to open up and share your story it's going to help a lot of people you know um, what i would uh i've had some real successes in my lifetime and you think you know what good did i everybody did i do by being danny partridge it was neat it was fun to do and then i'm doing a more than radio show but I don't do the kind we'd call in and go, hey, man, I'm having health problems. I'd say call right. your doctor. Right. But I wondered what value is to what I'm doing. And maybe it just all builds up to this. Yeah, you definitely are adding value. And you made the show when it was the Partridge family. <laughs> You're and right. I decided that we said he's the reason this show is so successful. You well, got okay. all kinds of stuff. Pretending I'm, you were Jewish and all kinds of things you did that were hilarious. I, you made well, the show. <laughs> well, thank you very much. And may I say in all humility, you're totally right. <laughs>